Blog Talk Blog Radio. Talk Radio. Your journey begins right now. From the west coast of British Columbia to you listening around the world and blasting out into the universe, welcome to tonight's edition of Spaced Out Radio. Call us at 1-607-203-5344. Tweet us at Spaced Out Radio. Find Dave on Facebook at Spaced Out Radio. Or Skype us at Spaced Out Radio. Now, here's your host, Dave Scott. Good evening and welcome to Spaced Out Radio. Tonight I am your host, Dave Scott, and thank you so much for tuning in to SpacedOutRadio.com. As we come in from the frozen Canadian tundra, I battled our way past the wild animals. I've even stopped, sidestepped Bigfoot to enter Uncle Jimbo's cabin, stoked up the fire, heated this place up. It's toasty in here. And I'm broadcasting to you live this Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning, if you are on the East Coast. Here at SOR, we do this thing seven days a week. We are your official one-stop shop when it comes to the supernatural, paranormal, spiritual, conspiratorial, and so much more. If you are on Twitter, I would love it if you give us a follow, at Spaced Out Radio. Give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show, and you can ask to join our private Spaced Out Radio group as well as our other group, Podcast Central. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott SOR. You can now subscribe to our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show, and of course, our website is spacedoutradio.com. At this time, as we do every night, we want to say a special hello to our fans listening and taking part in the Space Out Radio chat room, along with our fans at Paranormal Into the Night and Paranormal Forum. If you head to our website, spacedoutradio.com, you can check out Cat's Corner. Psychic Catherine Fallman will answer one lucky listener's submitted question per week. Tonight's show is brought to you by the iPhone app Spirit Story Box. It only costs a buck. It's only on the iPhone. Spirit Story Box, the official ghost hunting app of Space out radio looking for a newspaper to read about the other side of politics health supernatural paranormal and so much more give it a try the new agora newspaper purpleplates.com help heal your body mind and soul drop into their site and heal yourself today and space out radio listeners receive a 10 percent discount when you head to rivulet reiki and readings who provide healings in person or at a distance now When I speak of channeling, I hope many of you out there don't think that I'm talking about surfing the channels on your TV looking for some reality show rerun to watch. I'm joking, of course. Tonight, though, we're going to be learning about channeling and communicating with spirits on the other side. Some intuitives do it all by allowing the spirit to come into their body and talk through them. It's a trippy experience. Others use methods like Ouija boards or pendulums. There are actually many ways, really, to accomplish this. But you have to know what you're doing. How do you know when you're calling in the spirit you want to talk to? How can you confirm this? Psychic medium Kim Babcock is our guest tonight. Kim co-owns a small metaphysical shop called Serenity Mind Body Spirit LLC in Ohio. This is where she practices her readings in Level 2 Reiki. If you've never had Reiki, I highly suggest you try it. It feels great. Mrs. Spaced Out Radio is a Reiki master as well. Throughout her life, she has had experiences in the sixth sense that has helped Kim develop her abilities. Recently, she started channeling a young man named Eric, and her abilities to help a family cope with the suicide death of their son has helped create believers that there is truly life after life. Now, Kim will be with us for the first hour in hour number two of tonight's program. It's open lines. Whatever topic you want to discuss, you can call in at one 607 203-5344 and ask me anything or tell me one of your spooky haunted stories. Once again, that's in hour number two. Tonight in hour number one, once again, we bring in Kim Babcock to Spaced Out Radio. Kim, thank you so much for joining us tonight. How are you? Hi, thank you for having me. I'm doing great. Happy to be here. I'm happy that you're awake. Because I know you had to get a little bit of a cat nap before this. And you know what? I, as I mentioned, your your store that you have, your metaphysical store, and I'm going to plug that one more time here, Serenity Mind Body Spirit LLC, you're in Ohio. And as I told you before the show, 
I'm amazed recently how many of our guests or how many people have popped up around this show listening in that are from Ohio. What is in the water in Ohio that there are so many strange things that are going on? <laughs> That's good. I'm happy to hear about all the Ohioans. Um, you know, I think it's a combination between um, it seems like this area is a hot spot for, um, you know, paranormal type of interactions, but also um, a growing number of open-minded individuals. Um, so I think that, you know, that combination um, provides provides great support in what I do. So I, I definitely see the numbers growing in that respect. If you want to visit Kim's website, you can go to kimbabcock.net to read her incredible story and her journey, especially through channeling Eric. And I want to get into that channeling part with Eric later on in the program. But first, I want to focus on you here. At what point in your life did you realize that you had this ability to communicate with spirit? Did it come naturally, or was it something that you needed to work on? Well, you know, it's it's definitely something that started naturally. It's something that found me. It's never anything that I, I sought out to do. Um, you know, all growing up um, throughout childhood and into my, you know, um, young adult years, I experienced things that nobody else around me um, was was seeming to, to experience along with me. Um, and so I just, I kind of knew something was different, but I didn't know what until, um, you know, later in my adult life, my husband lost his grandfather. And, um, you know, probably a couple weeks after he passed, um, I just started seeing him every day. I, I, I would see him just, um, he kept doing the same gesture. And what he was doing was he was taking his hand out of his pocket and he would open his hand, and he was giving me a pocket watch. And I thought, man, why do I keep getting this vision of, of you know, Grandpa Barry? And didn't understand what this meant. So I told my mother-in-law, and because uh, it was her father, and she went and got the pocket watch that used to belong to him that he kept showing me. So I thought, all right, there must be something to this. <laughs> and I just started reading on um, quantum physics and metaphysics, um, you know, all the the clairs, the clairvoyance, clairaudience, and learn how to develop that. But, you know, all along the way, I was just, it was like somebody opened the floodgates and I would just start seeing and hearing things. And um, I think, you know, the one thing that made all the difference was the fact that I listened to it and I acted on it. Because any time I heard or saw something, I didn't know where it came from. I just trusted it. And I would pass it along, and whoever I passed it along to seemed to connect with um, what seemed to be coming out of midair. <laughs> so, um, you know, as I, I grew in experiences and um, my understanding with all of this, I began to kind of shape and craft my own style and realizing that I was communicating with the other side. Um, so that's when I, you know, I just started reading um, the books that I guess came into my path and um, read quite a few books that changed my life in the way that um, shaped my, you know, communication with the other side. And, and so now, you know, my intentions are using those abilities to to bridge that gap between the physical world and the spiritual world because so many people are convinced or think that when they lose their loved one in the physical sense um, that they can't communicate anymore. So um, my intentions are to help help bridge you know that gap and keep them in contact with their loved ones kim for many people who struggle with seeing paranormal activity and or spirits one of the problems that they that always comes up is how will society accept me you know whether it's people who i work with whether it's friends especially teenagers or youngsters who are very open and honest and they want to tell their friends and their friends tell other friends and then the peer pressure and the you know can start the bullying can start or parents of that friend now say well i really don't want you hanging out with that child because it came up in conversation how do you treat that type of scenario and did you have to deal with that yourself as you were growing up um, you know, not necessarily as much growing up because I didn't 
I didn't quite understand what was happening. You know, I had I had many things happening, and I would share it with my parents, and they were always just supportive. Of course, they didn't really understand what was happening either. <laughs> but, um, you know, I know for myself it took me a long time to actually come out of the closet with um, what was going on. Um, and, you know, it's hard. It's, it's you know, everybody's communities um, are different in the way they they perceive and understand. Um, everybody has different views. So for myself, kind of um, coming out of the closet and sharing this with everybody was, was not easy, but um, it was definitely needed because, you know, hiding that side of yourself or hiding what you do is, is really unfair to yourself. Um, so, you know, <laughs> you gotta let you gotta let them know gently because it's not it's not so common. <laughs> so, um, you know, and also raising kids, um, I it, it's to them it's it's just normal. It's uh, it's their normal. So, you know, when I've heard my children talk to their friends about what I do, and it's just yeah, big deal. My mom has readings, and she talks to those on the other side, and um, they understand very much where I come from when I do it. Um, the fact that I, I'm, I'm intending to help people heal from their loss. So I think that in itself, you know, understanding the intentions behind it really helps uh, when trying to share that with people because it's not, it's not always an easy subject to bring up. <laughs> we are talking channeling tonight with psychic medium Kim Babcock on Space Out Radio, her website, kimbabcock.net, if you want to check it out. Now, Kim, do you believe then, like most psychic mediums do, that everyone has the ability to channel? or to communicate with the other side. Yeah, I absolutely do. You know, I believe that everybody has the abilities. I think it's natural. It's the most natural state of being. But I, it's it's obvious in, in today's society, not everybody's capable of um, fine-tuning it and working with it to, to be effective, um, whether it's they're not capable because they, they're not interested or... Um, you know, sometimes ego gets in the way unintentionally, but um, there's, a, there's a whole lot that goes into being able to fine-tune it and, and maintain it and use it in a way that, um, you know, can be effective and, and help others. So I definitely think it's, it's something that we're all born with. It's just fine-tuning it, flexing that one muscle, making it stronger. In your studies of learning your abilities did you ever kind of look back and and you look or you look around whether it's at a shopping mall or out in a public place a park or something and wonder you know how many people truly are missing out on their gifts yeah you know that thought has crossed my mind so many times and it it seems like you know there's times where i kind of go back and forth on that thought because i i i walk around and i think man these people are just zombies are they really awake to the world around them but then at the same time just with that thought you know if you start engaging people in conversation about um, spirituality or you know talking about the afterlife i i've been quite surprised with how many people have had experiences or can relate in some respect so it's been you know a a nice surprise to see how open-minded people are and um, that more and more people uh, are, are coming out with, uh, you know, different experiences and admitting to different experiences that they've had, and it seems like less people are afraid to share that. So that's a good thing. It's nice to see that movement. When someone approaches you that they've never had this experience or they feel that they, they have this ability and want to open up, how do you help people or what advice do you give them in trying to open them up so they could have this ability as well? Well, you know, that's a great question. Um, one of my friends is um, kind of going through something like this. He's <clears throat> he's lost his father and his best friend in the same year, and um, he's young, very, very young, um, almost 19, I think he is. <laughs> and um, I, through my own guides, I've been guided to try to help him open up and communicate to the other side. And, um, you know, in that, I always just tell him, just listen to what feels natural. Listen to 
yourself first. Connect with your natural self. You know, anything that begins to pull you out of feeling like yourself is is going to make it harder to hear or to see, you know, to feel the other side of communicate. So when, you know, when when encouraging anyone to try to open up their channels of communication, I just encourage people to first um, connect to yourself in the most natural ways that you can. Whatever makes you feel more like yourself is your meditation. Um, and that can be anything. And, and when you find those avenues, um, you know, really cherish them and, and stay connected to yourself naturally because, again, what makes you feel unnatural or unlike yourself is going gonna, is gonna to kind of clog up those channels. So it's, it's one of those things that's really hard um, to put words on. It's really hard to describe. But it's like once you've experienced it, experienced um, those emotions, those feelings, it's much easier to get back to. And sometimes, not for everybody, but for some, spirit just absolutely takes over and says, it's time. <laughs> and and I've had that happen to me and I've had that happen to me personally. And you know, as many as many listeners who know this show and know my own personal experiences and my questions that I have with it, my happily boring life ended on December thirteenth, twenty eleven, when I ended up channeling the angel of death after having a sighting in my mother's eyes. So can it be that forward or was my experience in your professional opinion an anomaly? Oh, no, I definitely think that, um, I think it can happen both ways. You know, I, I've seen people who were completely oblivious to the thought of communicating with the other side and having <clears throat> interactions with the other side. And then I've seen, um, you know, those people shift their <clears throat> intentions to um you know, learning about that and, and slowly developing. But then I've also seen it, it like yourself and, and myself, um, <laughs> where someone on the other side just opens the floodgates and communication starts happening one way or another. Um, and, and sometimes it can be awe-inspiring. It can be um, a little earth-shattering, too, <laughs> because you don't quite expect what happens. You don't expect information. And, and when it comes to you so clearly... And then when you can find ways to validate that information, it's, it's incredible. It's surprising. But, um, yeah, I've definitely seen it happen both ways, Dave. We're talking with Kim Babcock tonight, psychic medium. We're talking channeling, how to do it. How does one figure out if they have their own abilities tonight on Spaced Out Radio? Her website, kimbabcock.net. Dino has a question in the Paranormal End of the Night forum that's on Facebook. And he is wondering, Kim, with your channeling, is it just through Eric, one person, or can you channel through others as well? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I started channeling um, probably six to seven years ago and um, didn't come across the channeling Eric blog until last year. So, um, you know, initially I started doing this again you know, to connect people to their loved ones that, that they've lost in this, you know, physical life. And and so most of the time, um, you know, I always tell people it's based on my relationship with God that I do this. Um, I, I had a point, Dave, where the information was coming through, the you know, the visions, um, hearing things, feeling things was coming through so strong. I didn't know where it was coming from, and I began to question that. And I remember one night just, just breaking down and not being able to handle it, and um, I, I put it out there to the universe. I told God, if this isn't coming from you, make it stop, and it increased tenfold. So, you know, I realized, okay, this is okay. This is um, what I'm supposed to do, and, um, you know, in that realization, um, just began honoring what I hear, honoring what I feel, passing it along in a gentle way because it's not always again, easy to approach somebody um, in public and say, hey, excuse me, um, your deceased sister is here and she wants to talk. <laughs> so, you know, um, I definitely started started doing this uh, long before I came across the Channeling Eric blog, but um, definitely grateful that I've joined the Channeling Eric team. 
Kim, what's it like to channel? For most people who haven't had that experience, I would love it if you could describe from start to finish what you are going through personally as the spirit comes to you. All right. Um, You know, one of the things that any of my close friends would tell you is (laughs) they they know when I get in that zone because I, I must get this, like, spaced out look on my face and I'm no longer here, which is what they say. And I can tell you, um, when I channel, memory is gone. There's no memory of the channeled information. So sometimes I'll go back if people have recorded sessions and and go over that and listen to it. And it's like, man, I don't even remember saying that. But it's because it's all channeled, you know. Um, So for me, when I sit down and and intend to tune in to do a session, I set aside my complete sense of self. Um, So what that means is, you know, there is absolutely, for me anyway, there's absolutely no ego in what I do. I set aside Kim. I set aside Kim's memory, knowledge, um, and emotions, and just see myself as a complete conduit. And um, so to me, the way I see it, the way it's been explained to me by the other side is um, spirit's the positive um, you know, electrical charge, if you want to call it that. I'm the conduit, and then my client is the ground. So, you know, as I tune in, I just begin to listen and feel. And, and I always use my client's first name as my mantra and just tune into their energy based on their first name. And then I just start feeling who's around. That's the best way I can describe it. And sometimes it feels like I'm standing next to a husband figure or it feels like I'm standing next to a sister. And so then I begin to pass that along to them, and then I'll start to see um, symbols, images. Sometimes it's a literal interpretation. Sometimes it's symbolic. Um, And one way or another, you know, I'll get the message through to the client. And um, I always encourage my clients, too, to take notes or record the sessions, like I said, because sometimes they'll come back to me and say, hey, do you remember when you told me? And I'll say, no, I don't, because it's it's all channeled information. There's no... um, no part of that session um, has my memory attached to it. So it can be difficult at times to not have that have that memory, but I, I guess I prefer it that way because it keeps the sessions um, organic. And I've had, you know, repeat clients that I've even read for weekly, and I still don't recall, you know, what we discussed the week before. <laughs> so, um, but it's, you know, I'm, I'm grateful in, in all of it. You take... I, I'm still learning, you know, learning as I go. Each each session, you know, uh, spirit will assign new symbols and new meanings. Um, so that's always interesting when they do that. But, um, you know, it's really about tuning into the world around you. And even if, you know, I kind of make a joke and I'll, you know, I'll tell my mom if we're out and about, I'll say, I have my ears on today. And I don't typically walk around listening to the other side when I'm just, out and about because it's very fatiguing but sometimes I will and I'll just listen to who's here spiritually and I'll I'll, you know approach strangers and pass along messages if I feel the need to Um, so you know it's just it's just feeling the world around you feeling who's connected to the world around you so you know if, if you're at that you know park and there's a mother with her baby, and, and you're starting to pick up on a male that's that's with her from the other side. Um, listen to that. Feel feel it out. And, you know, I used to always ask spirit, well, okay, if you want me to approach them, because, you know, approaching strangers isn't my forte. <laughs> it's not where I prefer, because uh, this, whole, this whole thing can bring people to such a vulnerable state. And uh, people don't like to be emotional in public, so... But sometimes when I do approach people, you know, I'll say to Spirit, okay, give me something to open the door with them. You know, give me anything you can to validate who you are to them. So um, then you just kind of approach people in a a gentle way um, and and pass along whatever's coming through, you know. But the best thing is is to, the best thing I would say that has, has really helped me, you know, fly with this whole thing is to lose any ounce of fear that you might carry about being wrong or misinterpreting the information from the other side. Because once you let go of that fear, um, 
fear is a filter. Once you let go of it, you'll be able to see and hear and, and feel much much more clear. I have one question from Lori in the Space Out Radio chat room for you, Kim, before we go to break here. And Lori is asking, what happens to your spirit when you are channeling? Oh, that's a fantastic question. Um, you know, honestly, I don't feel that a whole lot happens to me when I'm just channeling regularly um, because I I just see myself as a just a channel, a com- just a complete invisible conduit you know again um all the ego goes to the side and it's it's just me channeling information so if anything you know like i had explained before um spirit is the positive charge um i'm the conduit and the client's the ground sometimes i can be fatigued if i'm not being grounded by my client if they're not validating the information but other than that um you know what happens to me when i i channel is you know, afterwards I feel uh, rejuvenated. <laughs> you know, I feel like I have more energy than than when I started, and I feel more calm, you know, after each session. So um, some of those effects are, are quite pleasant, but it's not that's not always the case either. So fantastic question. Wonderful. Kim, I'm going to get you to hold on here for our first break of the night as we will come back and talk more about channeling, how we can open up more people to it, and we'll get into Eric as well. Our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio is Kim Babcock. Her website, kimbabcock.net. She is a psychic medium, very talented one indeed. We're lucky to have her on tonight's show. We're with her for one half hour. Hour number two, we will be opening up the phone lines to you. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio I am your host, Dave Scott. We'll be right back. This is Patrick Webster Small, and I'm going to bring you the Webster Phenomena right here on Spaced Out Radio, Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Every week, I'm going to bring you the freshest information on the globe. I'm bringing you guys the truth, extraterrestrials in the sky, prophecy, chemtrails, rainbow spot, the seventh angel, biblical skies, ancient gods, ghosts, spirits, see it. Hear it. So let's do this every Monday night. I'll see you back here at 8 p.m. Pacific time. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the place have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, How can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box, the iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box, the spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Did you know that Spaced Out Radio is live seven days a week? This is Jim Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekend. You can listen to my show, Spaced Out Weekend, every Saturday and Sunday night starting at 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific. On Spaced Out Weekend, we like to delve into the paranormal, even the newest technologies that have enhanced modern-day ghost hunting. And sometimes, we'll get a little creative and dabble into the crypto world, UFOs, and much, much more. So tune in at www.spacedoutradio.com on the weekends and listen to me, Jim Tyson, on Spaced Out Weekend. Hi there, this is Jolene with Rivula Reiki and Reading, and I want you to relax. Let me help you chill out and get in touch with your body, mind, and soul. In this busy world, sometimes we need to let go, and this is where I can help. Visit my website, rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr, or my Facebook page, rivuletrnr, to set up an appointment for relaxation, Reiki, or readings, no matter where you are. Spaced Out Radio listeners will also receive 10% off their first visit. It's time for you to make time for you. The Spaced Out Radio Network can be found at spacedoutradio.com. 
Hi there, this is Dave Scott. Here you can join the latest on our weekly shows and news from around the world involving UFOs, cover-ups, cryptids, ghosts, and more. Read articles from our very talented staff and check out our weekly tarot card reading from psychic Catherine. You can also sign up for free on our forum and tell us about your experiences. SpacedOutRadio.com. Always live, always interactive. Ready to find out what's flying up in the sky? Me too. Hi there, this is Rich Giordano. Please join me every Sunday night at 7 for the AZ UFO Show. It's a fast and compelling two-hour show on UFOs, extraterrestrials, conspiracy theories, and much more. Every week we will have great guests and great topics to try and answer the ultimate question, are we alone in this universe or not? So tune in to the AZ UFO Show with me, Rich Giordano, right here on the Spaced Out Radio Network at spacedoutradio.com. Would you like to connect with Dave and his guests? Learn more at spacedoutradio.com for the latest news, features, photos, and articles. Spacedoutradio.com is where you can stay up to date on what's happening around the world and up in the stars. And now, back to Dave Scott. Welcome back to Space Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for tuning in. Quick shout out to a packed house in the Space Out Radio chat room, along with Paranormal Into the Night and Paranormal Forum. Thank you so much for being with us and asking some great questions to our guests tonight. Before we bring Kim Babcock back on, I do want to remind you that we are in the process of moving over to Spreaker. We're hopefully within a few days here. And when I say a few days, five or six days of doing a test show on there. So it's looking good. Tomorrow night on the show, the crypto guru, Ronald Murphy, will be back with us on Spaced Out Radio. We'll be talking writing books. We'll be talking cryptids, fairies, and so much more. That's tomorrow night on Spaced Out Radio. Hey, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Spaced Out Radio. On Facebook, give our page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show, and ask to join our private Spaced Out Radio group as well as Podcast Central. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott SOR, Spaced Out Radio Show. You can subscribe to our new YouTube channel. And of course, our website is spacedoutradio.com. Once again, tonight we bring in Kim Babcock. She is a psychic medium out of the state of Ohio. Everybody seems to be up with our guests lately. I don't know why, but that's kind of cool nonetheless. Kim, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I really appreciate your time. Oh, yeah, it's been a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. One of the things I want to ask you, Kim, is there are so many different ways that people can channel you use your body and your mind and your soul, but there's the Ouija board, there's pendulums, there's which includes dowsing and other figures. What do you think about the other ways people use to channel? Are you comfortable with those? Have you tested those out yourself? You know, I've, I've, um, I'm comfortable with them. Um, I don't have any, you know, anything against any other methods. Every everything's different. Uh, for every channel, every channeler, um, the way they channel is different. But I always encourage people that you don't need anything to channel. You don't need tools. You don't need a Ouija board. Um, while it's, it can be interesting to use those things and see how how differently um, messages can come across, um, you know, I always encourage people don't develop that attachment because you yourself are the perfect channel. Um, so just you know, tuning into that, fine tuning it, and understanding how that works, um, you can you can develop yourself in some fantastic ways. And then it's kind of like, you know, the Ouija board and uh, pendulums. That's just the icing on the cake. Sometimes that stuff's pretty fascinating um, uh, to to kind of play around with and and see how how differently the information can come through through those different channels. But um, you know, I've come across and, and met many different people that use many different um, tools to channel, and they're uh, amazing at it. Um, I myself have never used anything to channel, um, no pendulums, nothing like that. Sometimes I might carry um, crystals in my pocket, but other than that, it's it's just uh, listening to the clairs, the clairaudience, the clairvoyance, and, and really focusing your awareness 
in, in those areas at the time of the session. So, you know, I'll take all my energy to my heart chakra or to my third eye. When I sit down to do a session, I try to put all my consciousness in those areas. Um, and it seems, mm-hmm. to, it seems to work. <laughs> Kim, I have a question from our listener from the furthest away, way down in New Zealand. Her name is Helen. She is asking, is channeling different from just using your clairvoyance compared to claircognizance or others? For me, it is. Um, you know, I guess my strongest clair would be my clairvoyance. Uh, that's where it all started was, you know, the seeing. The claircognizance, some people, that's their strongest, uh, just the just the absolute knowing. You don't know why you know something, but you know. Or uh, to clear audience, you know, that's another strong one for myself, just hearing things and passing it along verbatim because, you know, you can't, you can't filter it, you can't change it because then it becomes untruth. Um, so there's there's different clairs that work differently for, for everybody that are, you know, some are stronger um, than others. And um, when you find that that point within yourself, which one you connect with the most, um, you know, fine-tuning it, I guess, seems to, to come easy. For me, you know, I, I started out with the feeling and the seeing. I, I just felt things, and I didn't know why. Or, and that feeling led to the source of information. It, you know, it was... It was like, I, I feel like this, or I feel like that. I need to share this, I need to share that. And um, I didn't always get words. I got feelings and emotions and, and would create messages out of those feelings and emotions. So working off of, um, you know, my heart chakra again and, and the clair, clairvoyance was really where it all started. And then I started to develop the others um, just through some different literature that I had read that helped me um, fine-tune all of those different clairs. So, so yeah, it can be it can vary from from one channeler to the next. For sure, for sure. I have a question from Claudia in Paranormal Into the Night. Kim, the ones who have visited after passing on, have they left any physical evidence to verify they were there to their loved ones that you have experienced? Oh, that's a great question. Um, there have been. Through a lot of my sessions, there have been references to physical evidence where they will say, you know, I've had many times where I'm sitting down with a client and spirit will say, talk about the card that they have in their wallet right now or talk about, you know, the item in their pocket right now. And then the client will be like, oh, my goodness, this is what I'm carrying right now. So they'll reference um, physical items physical evidence um, to show that their awareness is still here and still with us, their consciousness. Um, and, and, you know, we were talking about channeling Eric earlier, and, and Eric is one that does leave physical evidence, and he's done that in my house. And um, it didn't scare me. <laughs> it was just a couple weeks ago, but it um, definitely caught me off guard. Um, he's pretty. He's really good at that. He knows what he's doing when it comes to communication and, and crossing those veils. Um, to make a long story short, my small bag of chocolate was missing, and I looked for it all day long and uh, finally gave up. And sitting at the kitchen table at night, all of a sudden um, the bag of chocolate appeared in the middle of my kitchen at the ceiling height, and dropped from the ceiling to to the kitchen floor. And I kind of laughed, and I knew it was Eric because he's known for that kind of thing. He's also, in my house, um, manifested an airsoft BB. Um, So so there's been a a few things like that. And then for his his mom, he's even left um, a message on their answering machine after after he passed. And, you know, Elisa had it analyzed and and that sort of thing. But... um, you know, there's there's all kinds of, of evidence, not just through myself, but through many, that um, consciousness survives physical death. And, that's, you know, part of my mission is to help people understand that just because the physical body isn't here anymore doesn't mean that their consciousness isn't. 
We are talking with Kim Babcock tonight on Spaced Out Radio. She's a psychic medium out of Ohio. Her website, KimBabcock.net. Kim, I'm going to get you to speak up just a tad higher, if you don't mind, uh, when we ask the next question. Thank you so much. Um, Let's talk about Eric for a moment. Sure. For people who are not familiar with the Eric story, the background is this young, handsome, 20-year-old lad on the outside projected a very happy, robust type life, but inside he was lonely. He felt that he wasn't good enough. You know, a lot of clinical depression almost that it seemed to be with him that so many youngsters have today. And it's truly sad that they don't feel good enough or popular enough or whatever. And he ended his own life very tragically. I would love it if you could take this story on from there. Absolutely. You know, Eric, um, he suffered with bipolar um, disorder, and he also had Tourette's. And in his physical life, um, you know, I think he was he was more empathic than he realized in his physical life and uh, very sensitive and, and caring, and his friends just couldn't meet him there. His friends couldn't um, appreciate who he was. So, you know, that led to the, the depression and... Um, ultimately um, him taking his own life. And, you know, this was back in uh, about six years ago in October. And since then, his mom began uh, journaling her her grief through a blog called ChannelingEric.com. And um, this blog has, has quickly gone international. Um, Eric from the other side leads people to that blog because of the information that's there, the information um, through the sessions that has been channeled from the other side has brought people so much healing and has helped people let go of fear of, fear of losing a loved one or fear of, of even dying themselves. Um, So this blog has been a great spot for people to come and, um, feel connected to it's it's like its own little family but it's it's actually huge <laughs> um so you know fast forward a few years and here i am just you know learning my channeling abilities about five years into it and um i was attending a reiki class and a friend bought uh brought eric's book the first book called my son in the afterlife and shared that with the class um shared copies and, you know, after I read that book, it, it really, it was a little earth-shattering for me because it, I, I was raised a certain way and conditioned to believe certain things. And that book sort of debunked all of that and brought truth without the BS behind it. And um, so, you know, it kind of launched my own self-exploration all over again. And in that time, you know, I started working with his mom and working with channeling Eric himself, and I gotta tell you, he's he's pretty powerful. He's known for interacting with um, his blog members, and he describes in his book um, his encounter with God, meeting God, and asking God to allow him to be a spirit guide that's more connected to the earthly realm. So um, he has had a direct hand in uh, many of my clients. Um, lives and coming in and and literally saving them from suicide. Uh, That's, you know, a strong part of his mission is to help people not suffer from what he suffered from. So it's been an an incredible journey so far, and and I'm extremely grateful to be a part of the Channeling Air community. Did he want to die? Or was it something where he just didn't feel that he had any other alternative? You know, I think he he did want to be on the other side because I, um, through the way that I experienced Eric, you know, and the the time that he took his life, unfortunately, wasn't his first attempt. Um, so the first time he had a near near death experience, but he, you know, his his mother is a doctor, and you know they were able to bring him back from that from that first attempt at suicide. And but he did have a near death experience and it seems, you know, Elisa has described Elisa's his mom, she's described that um she thought that he had had that near death experience and got a taste of what the other side is like 
and then since then, um, you know, didn't let that idea go in his head. And so I think that um, he did he did want to take his own life because ultimately he it seemed you know he didn't connect with anything in the physical world anymore, and he knew I think um, he knew he would be limitless and much more effective in the spiritual realm in, in helping people and, and doing what he wanted to do because in the physical life, people didn't give him a chance. They didn't hear him out. And, um, you know, now on the other side, there's no limits as to how much he can help. I don't know if any of our audience just heard this, and I'm posting the questions in our chat room right now, but while you were giving that answer about halfway through, I swore I just heard a man's voice very quietly talking behind you. I wouldn't doubt it um, because I started hearing him because I asked <laughs> I asked him, you know, just as you asked me, Dave, um, you know, because anytime people ask me questions uh, that – that's regarding any spirit i'd rather them speak for themselves than me speak for them so i asked eric you know did you want to did you want to die or you know how did this happen and he said he wanted to so he's known for that though he's he's known for leaving evps leaving evidence that he's he's here so um sometimes though he can make the electronics go a little haywire um he's a prankster so if if there are people out there listening that don't know of him Check out his blog. He's 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 fun. He's kind-hearted. He's very genuine. Um, extremely supportive, and uh, he's he's an amazing teacher from the other side. It's amazing what he's doing. We are talking with Kim Babcock tonight on Spaced Out Radio. She's a psychic medium working on the channeling Eric Case. Her website, kimbabcock.net. How often is Eric in communication? Because there's always the skeptics or people on the outside who will say, well, I've heard that Eric isn't really in communication much anymore. What is your experience with that? You know, um, I can tell you there's times where I think there are people that are um, too dependent on Eric or anybody else um, to, you know, it it seems like there are people out there who are are a little too dependent on getting answers from the other side rather than depending on themselves. So there's a lot of times where I'm communicating with Eric, you know, in a session and people are asking him questions, but he'll say, you know, I'd really be doing you a disservice just to answer that question for you. Um, you need to tune in to yourself and listen to what you want. So, um, you know, I, I think he's still very widely in communication with many. I know for myself he is, but there's also times where, you know, I still have numerous sessions daily where Eric is not a part of them. Um, it, it's really dependent on what the client needs. And, and all of this started, you know, Eric started showing up in my sessions without me asking him to come forward. Um, he, I had read his book, so I was able to recognize his image, and he, he just popped up in one of my sessions and, and said, tell her not to worry about getting breast cancer. And I thought, what? So I passed that along to my client, and she just broke down and said, oh, my God, that's my biggest fear. Um, so, you know, sometimes he comes forward without me asking, but um, I think he's still widely in communication with with, um, many, many channelers. So, you know, Mm -hmm. there's a whole movement he's trying to create with bringing people together, helping people understand the other side and and detach from fear. How many people is he talking through right now? (laughs) Um, I I would say that's limitless. Um, You know, at this very moment, uh, it's hard to tell, but... As far as people that are channeling him and sharing it, um, I, the numbers continue to grow daily. You know, if you if you visit the blog, there's over 11,000 hits a day on this blog, where people are having encounters with him in, in different ways. And you know, he's he's very good at um, leaving that evidence that you spoke of earlier, that physical evidence that he's there. And he talks in his book about how he does that, how he's learned how to still, you know, interact with the physical when you don't have that body anymore, that sense of, of 
you know, that stop mechanism that a body can provide. So, and it's extremely fascinating. It's all about the physics behind it. We're talking with Kim Babcock tonight on Spaced Out Radio. KimBabcock.net is her website. It's already having an effect here. I've just had a friend of mine, Pascal, in Ontario, Canada, mention that he is feeling Eric, as well as Helen, all the way in New Zealand, who has said she is picking up his energy as well. So he really likes the fact that we're talking very positively about him, doesn't he? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, he's... He's grateful when given the opportunity, you know, basically when people trust. When people trust this process, that's when he comes through really strong. When when you trust that he's here and he's a part of it, um, that's when you'll start to pick up on him and know that he's here. Um, it's it's those times that and he's he won't be asked either. He's he's very candid, he's very straightforward and when people say things like, um, Okay, I set something out on my desk. Can Eric tell you what it is if he's here? You know, that prove it sort of um, thought process, you know, Eric's response is, is is funny but also perfect. He says, I know I exist. I don't have to prove it to anybody. <laughs> so when you trust the process and you trust that he's here, he seems to be um, to make his presence known that much more. It, it just seems to amplify um, when you just have that organic sense of trust. So... It's, it's pretty amazing, and, and it's all, you know, coming from the heart, too. Very heart-centered, that boy. What is his deepest message that he has sent out? Is he just hell-bent to, and I mean that in a good way, to help people in general who were feeling like him, or is he just bouncing around kind of saying, hey, no, that's not going to happen, this is going to happen, you know, just because he wants to still be connected to Earth? You know, um, he says uh, the two things that he's hell bent on on teaching people is losing fear. People have so many people have fear of what the other side is like, what the transition is like. He says so. I want to help people lose that fear, but also raising awareness on mental illness and and you know everything that falls under that umbrella. You know, not stereotyping those people, not judging those people supporting those people that, that have any sort of mental illness. And he says his number one, you know, drive home purpose for staying connected to the earthly realm is to prevent suicide. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a fix. So, um, you know, that's, that's his, and he, he's not limited to those. You know, he, he does so much more, but those are his main, seems to be those are his main uh, areas of focus. Do you find, though, that he is coming to every sort of client to help out? Or is he picking and choosing his spots? Like, if you need his help, will you call in and say, Eric, what do you think about this? You know, it seems that any time, you know, he's expressed this to me many times, that any time people ask for his help, he'll be there. But he's not just going to show up and do something for you. He's going to guide you through it. Um, there's there's many times where people ask Eric questions, and he'd rather teach you about that than than tell you the answer. Um, and it's funny because you can hear sometimes you can hear the clients get frustrated. Like I just want a yes or no. What should I do? And <laughs> he'll say, Well, I could easily tell you what to do, but what's more important is helping you. You know, um, I don't know. You know, connect with yourself or honor what you're hearing naturally um, so he'll he he always redirects you back to you and trying to get people to be more self-reliant on on their own intuition uh, because people seem to second guess that and they place their trust outwardly um, so that's a big part of his purpose too we are talking with Karen Babcock tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Her website, Karen ba- or make that Kim. I, I apologize. Kim Babcock. dot net yes. is her website. Kim, how long do you expect to work on this case? You've worked about it on it for about a year and a half. Is this something that you're going to continue with just to see where it goes, or do you feel there's a timeline for you on it? You know, I definitely don't put a timeline on it. Um, this is something that there. It, I feel like. We have just 
you know, scratch the surface of what Eric is preparing. Um, there's quite a few other mediums where, you know, we're going on, on tour to put on um, a channeling Eric convention, basically, workshops, teaching, channeling. Um, through. We're going to go to, you know, eight major cities, so I definitely want to get that tour underway. And Eric's already talking about next year it's going to be an international tour. Um, but there's still so much more that he wants to do. And, you know, the most important thing, Dave, is the reason why I have – made it such a, a commitment of mine to be a part of this team is because of the way Eric has come in, and mostly in my live sessions where I'm sitting in front of a person, not an over-the-phone session, but he has come in directly and told me to tell this client, tell that, you know, tell him, do not take your own life. And, you know, very clear, very blunt, very forward. And, and so literally saving many of my clients from suicide and, and, my way, I guess, of repaying Eric for helping my clients is by giving him voice. So, you know, I'm extremely grateful, again, to be a part of that community, and, and I definitely don't put any timeline on it. Um, there's a lot of things in the works right now, a lot of brand-new ideas that myself and his mom are, are coming up with and, and trying to shape and mold an online school for children and for adults, you know, developing spirituality and helping children learn and cope with it. So, um, so yeah, you know, there's definitely no limits right now. Definitely not going to limit myself. We're down to a couple minutes with you, and I'm going to end our session with you tonight, Kim, on a question from Claudia in Paranormal Into the Night. Has Eric mentioned how long it took him to realize that he had crossed over, and did he mention what happens at the moment of death on this side? He has. He has mentioned, he's talked about that in both of his books, um, that, you know, in in learning his, that he's crossed over, um, it, it, it seemed to be, you know, just shortly after he took his own life. He, he saw his body. Um, he, in, the, in his book, My Son in the Afterlife, um, or I take that back, uh, My Life After Death, um, the second book, A Memoir from Heaven, um, he talks about seeing his body and seeing the gun and bending down and trying to pick the gun up and his hand going right through it and realizing, okay, something's different. And then is when it kind of set in for him um, that his whole world had just changed. So, uh, yeah, he definitely describes those experiences in those books. It's incredibly fascinating. And our audience will have to pick them up. Kim Babcock, thank you so much for being on Spaced Out Radio tonight. It was an absolute pleasure, and I hope we get it to to do it again soon where we can maybe have you on for a full show maybe in the summertime where you can give us an update on what's happening with Eric. Yes, absolutely. I'd be honored. Awesome. Thank you so much, and you have yourself a good night. Thank you. Take care. That's Kim Babcock. Psychic medium from Ohio. Her website, kimbabcock.net. We were talking about how to learn how to channel, what we can do in order to get into that mode. We can all do it. It's a matter of figuring out how we do it. Kimbabcock.net is her website. We're going to go to break here at the top of the hour. When we come back, I'm opening up the phone lines to you. 1-607-203-5344. Ask me anything you want. Tell me your haunted stories. That's what it's about tonight. You're listening to Space Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott. We'll be right back after this break. The Phoenix Lights, Roswell, secret military aircraft, flying saucers. Let's check out the sky together. Hi, this is Rich Giordano, host of the AZ UFO Show right here on the Spaced Out Radio Network. Every Sunday night at 7, we hit the airwaves to talk about the phenomenon of unidentified flying objects and more. We want to hear your stories. Maybe you've seen what many others have seen. Only one way to find out, the AZ UFO Show on Sunday nights on the Spaced Out Radio Network on spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is James Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekends. And I know you're enjoying tonight's show with Dave Scott on Spaced Out Radio. I just wanted to remind you that Spaced Out Radio continues on the weekends with me. On Spaced Out Weekend, we hit the airwaves at www.spacedoutradio.com starting at 10 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. Eastern. 
We have great guests with interesting chats regarding all things paranormal, supernatural, cryptozoological, and much, much more. So tune in to Spaced Out Weekend and give us a listen. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the place have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit and... Expect a miracle. Need a break but don't have the time? Tired of life's running around? Hi, this is Jolene from Revela- Relaxation and Readings. Let me help you in your time of need. From Reiki to Realm Readings, I can help provide you therapy for your mind, body, and soul. Check out my website at rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr. And if you're a listener of Spaced Out Radio, receive 10% off your first session. Rivulet Relaxation and Readings. And don't forget to give my Facebook page a like. It's time for you to make some important time for you. The Spaced Out Radio Network can be found at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is Dave Scott. Here you can join the latest on our weekly shows and news from around the world involving UFOs, cover-ups, cryptids, ghosts, and more. Read articles from our very talented staff and check out our weekly tarot card reading from psychic Catherine. You can also sign up for free on our forum and tell us about your experiences. SpacedOutRadio.com. Always live, always interactive. The Webster Phenomena airs on Spaced Out Radio on Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. I'm your host, Patrick Webster Small, and I discovered extraterrestrials in the atmosphere, which led me to more discoveries developing the Webster Phenomena, which is the occurrence of extraterrestrials throughout nature. I will explain the Webster Phenomena and all my recent discoveries every Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time, right here on Spaced Out Radio. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Want to call in to Space Out Radio? You can. 1-607-203-5344. You can tweet us at Space Out Radio or send us a message on Facebook at Space Out Radio. And now, back to the show, here's Dave Scott. Welcome back for the second hour of Space Out Radio tonight. How y'all doing out there? We're going to open up the phone lines to you tonight. I want to hear your haunted stories, or if you have any questions about me, or you just have any ideas that you have questions about that maybe I can answer, we're going to get to it. I want to thank everybody in the Packed House and Paranormal Into the Night Paranormal Forum, as well as the Spaced Out Radio chat room. Your questions have been absolutely fantastic. Your listenership has been fantastic. Thank you so much for finding us as we continue to grow here. I want to give you all a Spreaker update. As many of you know, we are moving from Blog Talk Radio over to Spreaker. It's just a matter of time now. So the holdup right now that's causing this is I'm waiting for Spreaker to get back to me in regards to a Skype issue because unlike Blog Talk Radio, which has a built-in phone line when you sign up for them. Spreaker doesn't have that. So we have to sign up and get our own private phone line through Skype. So when I tried to download Skype into the Spreaker format, the program that they want you to download was not on the list of Skype programs. So I don't know what to download. So what I've done is I have contacted Spreaker, and I've let them know the issue. We are working on it right now. I have to file a report with their support system, which I'm going to be doing after the show, and hopefully we can get that resolved. As soon as we get the Skype 
situation resolved. Both James and myself will be doing a couple of test shows. They're not going to be very long, maybe 15, 20 minute test shows just to make sure that we have the board up and running where we want it. We're comfortable with everything. We're also in the process of changing over all the audio. Uh, Glenn Ferguson from Chronicles of the Unknown here in Canada, a television show, is going to be, uh, he's also an audio editor. He is doing our audio for us. So we're switching over all the commercials. We're switching over all of the promos. We're switching over all of the audio. So there's some big jobs that are really having to take part because we can't go to Spreaker with our old audio. It still has the blog talk radio phone number on it. It still has information on the previous show that is outdated. So we want to go in fresh. We want to go in clean. So that is the update on Spreaker right now. I am hoping to get this Skype situation cleared up by the weekend. My goal next week is to try and start getting some test shows running And as soon as Jim and I are comfortable, we're going to pull the plug on Blog Talk Radio. You can find us on Spreaker and Spreaker only. You can also check out our YouTube channel. That's where our archives are being downloaded to, and we are working on it ASAP. This, you know, the unfortunate part about something like this, and this is where I feel a little bit bad and I feel a little bit guilty, and I know I shouldn't, but I do. And I know James is the same way. When we are doing this process, we still have our daytime careers that we need to worry about, okay? We still got to be able to spend some time with the family. And like, for instance, on Sunday, one of my two days off of the week, I didn't even barely see my family and they were just upstairs because I have a studio in my own house. I spent 12 hours in the studio from 1230 in the afternoon until about 1245 a.m. working on trying to get everything over to Spreaker. So we are busting our ass here to try and get over to Spreaker. We're, we know the audio problems like tonight. Kim was very, very quiet on her end. The unfortunate part of blog talk radio is they don't have a volume button. And me being a terrestrial radio guy, I don't understand how you can have a studio without a volume button. It's kind of important. But that is one of the least issues that we have with BTR in regards to everything. So when we move over to Spreaker, we want to make sure that we know the system 100%. I don't want to be bogged down with trying to figure out what button to press we got to make sure that we have our audio set up. We have to make sure that Skype is working. So, for instance, it's not just getting a Skype phone number. It's how to take your calls. It's how to take multiple calls, how to put calls on hold. And this stuff all takes time when you have a daytime career and everything. So, you know, we're pushing hard. I wanted to give you that update as to what we are doing. And what I do ask, if you don't mind, if you can sign up for Spreaker, you can use your Facebook or Twitter, and there's a search button right at the top once you're logged in to your own account. You can make your own profile and everything. It's a very simple system. But all you have to do then, once you've created your own profile and you've logged into the system, is go to Spaced Out Radio. Type it into the search button. It will take you right there. And then all you have to do is click on follow. It's nice and simple. Here's the thing. And this is the exciting part of it, for those of you who don't know. The sooner we get to 100 likes when we're on Spreaker and we get some good shows and we're comfortable with it, we can apply to have Spaced Out Radio picked up by iHeartRadio. That's where we want to go. We need a minimum of 100. But here's the thing. Imagine how many shows on Spreaker have 100 likes. There's probably hundreds of them that have 100 likes that iHeartRadio has not brought onto their system. My dream and the challenge I'm putting out there to you, the listeners, is this. I want a thousand likes. 
I want a thousand likes and I need your help to get there. Jim needs your help to get there. Spaced Out Radio needs your help to get there. Imagine how much more seriously iHeartRadio is going to take us when we apply to them. When we have not 100 likes, but 1,000 likes. They are going to be giving us the thumbs up. I can see it. Maybe I'm being hopeful, but I don't think so. I think this is accurate. We go in with a 1,000 a likes, plus they're going to take some test programs of ours to see what it sounds like, to see if it's quality. The reason behind the new audio, the new commercials, the new extras, and everything. And we're going to be able to do it. I am fully confident on that. Fully confident. I want a thousand likes. I want to go to iHeartRadio with a thousand likes. Hell, we haven't even broadcasted a show on Spreaker yet, and we're at 36 likes. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but considering that we have been on, I've signed up for Spreaker a week ago, week and a half ago, and for the first week, we had no audio on there whatsoever. And then James started pushing our archives over there. To have 36 likes, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty excited by it. So I'm asking you guys to go to Spreaker, sign up with your Facebook, go into the search bar, type in Space Out Radio. If that doesn't work, you can type in Space Out Radio Show. And then right below our Space Out Radio logo, there's a button that says Follow. All you got to do is press that button, and your name gets added to it. I think we can do this. I'm going to lean on you guys for this. And I really, really am thankful that all of you are hopping on the bandwagon here, seeing that we have something special and are going with it. I'm going to open up the phone lines now. one 203 5344 is the call-in number. One six zero seven two zero three five three four four. This is from a Skype line right now. Caller, how are you doing tonight? Hi. Hi. Who's this? Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Adriana. Hi, Adriana. How can I help you out tonight? Hi. Well, I just had like a, a experience where I was sleeping. You know, you have that that feeling when something. Like it's it's, not, it's on top of you, like I think I'm not really sure what it's called, but I I felt that one time and then I opened my eyes and I kind of felt blurry. Weird. How long ago yeah, did this happen? It, it happened like uh like two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago I was like in bed sleeping on my side and I felt like you know something heavy. It kind of woke me up, and I opened my eyes, and I felt blurry. So, like, when, when I, I'm not really sure what it was, or, and when the thing, I don't know, um, got uh, up or 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 left, you know, I kind of saw, you know, I, I didn't see blurry again. Mm-hmm. So, I really don't know. I really don't know what A lot of people have had experiences with almost demonic shadows that will pin them down at night. It's almost, and some people and experts will explain that away as as a form of dreaming sleep paralysis. But when people are waking up and seeing eyeballs look at them or having someone talk or whisper into their face or their ear or they feel like they're being pinned down and they can see the shape of something on top, which I'm assuming you saw, that's downright yeah, that's eerie. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I, so, I didn't hear anything. I just saw kind of blurry, but kind of clear blurry, not like, like dark or... Or, or, you know, like a shape or, or fine, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and has it only happened the once? And did you have any bruises or marks in regards to it? 
No, 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 when I woke up, you know, the next morning, you know, no, nothing. Wow. How do you, how do you feel? How do you feel after something like that happens? I've had a lot of experiences personally, but I've never had that happen to me. First time experience like this, but but uh, I previously have seen um you know those black shadows uh kind of like walk and then they kind of disappear. She didn't walk it, but then they disappear. You know, like if they were walking, you know, just suddenly. Mm-hmm. No, awesome. Good. I'm gonna ha- I'm gonna have to let you go because your phone is cutting out. I do apologize for that, but thank you so much for calling in and telling me that story about the shadows. I am trying to line up. I'm already booking for April, and I am trying to line up right now. Uh, Heidi Hollis, and I know she's in a member of Paranormal Into the Night, but I'm trying to line her up right now. I was chatting with her earlier tonight about coming in and talking about shadow people because shadow people, if you've never seen one, they're freaky, man. I've had one experience about seven years ago with a shadow person and it is one trippy feeling. So I'm trying to line that up for April right now as right now our show is pretty much booked up right until, Oh, let me look at the calendar. April 18th. So what is that? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks. We're booked up eight weeks in advance right now. I'm pretty happy about that. One, six, zero, seven, two, zero, three, five, three, four, four is the call in number. If you want to call in and you want to Tell me your haunted paranormal story, or if you have a question that you would like me to answer about one of my experiences, about one of your experiences, or just point you in the direction, that is what we are doing for the rest of the show. We're going to go back to the phone lines right now. Familiar voice to this show. Joey, how are you? How are you, Dave? I am good. How are you in New York? Oh, man, I'm doing okay. It's raining out here, man. It's raining out here. You know what? We had rain here for the first time in, I would say, three months. The snow is falling, but I, uh, I'm i so used to the rain because near Vancouver, where I used to live, it rained. I mean, you would build an arc sometimes because you weren't sure if this was the flood of all floods that was going to be happening. But yeah. it it's okay. It's yeah. okay. So, Joe, tell me a story. Uh, and, not, and and not about your case of gout that you work really hard on trying to cure. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. Not, not about my case of gout. <laughs> well, I don't know. Do I have a story? Um, when I was little, when I was like five years old, I used to see people walking through my room. How about that? I used to see uh, at night like these ghosts walking through my room. Now I don't see them. But, you know, when I was about five years old, six years old, I saw that. <laughs> and it scared the crap out of me, actually. <laughs> was it? And, and I actually, yeah, I remember that vividly. Now I'm, I'm, I'm remembering myself as a little kid and scared the crap out of me, man. Scared the crap out of me. But uh, uh, then they went through uh, right through the wall. <laughs> Bye. And they, and they went through right right through the wall. Uh, but um, I I uh, I was scared for a long period of time. And that's what I guess you know my my uh, fear of uh, you know a dark totally dark room came from because when it was a totally dark room I actually saw the entities walking through the wall. It was actually really scary. Yeah. Joe, was was that in the house you're in now? Yes, yes. And you haven't had any paranormal activity since then, or you just haven't seen or experienced any. I haven't really seen or experienced any after that point. Uh, I remember just a little kid, you know, seeing that happen. And, uh, you know, I never shared that with anybody, actually. This is the first time I'm sharing that on air. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was scary. It was scary, you know. And I guess I didn't want to remember it, so that's why I didn't want to talk about it. But, uh, you know, 
I guess this is the perfect place to bring it up, right, Dave? <laughs> you know. Well, why not? Why not? Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, we try and do that. Yeah. You know. But yeah, I mean, I I have a fear of the dark because of that now. You know. So, um, like the pitch dark. So it's like I have to have some light coming in somewhere. You know, to actually mm-hmm. sleep. But um. Hey, yeah. Let I, me ask you, Joe. Let me ask you this: Have you ever? Uh, slept with a salt lamp in your room, a Himalayan salt lamp? No, I haven't. You should honestly try that out. I have three or four salt lamps in my house, and I was never a real big believer in the salt lamp. Mm -hmm. But since we've had one in our room, me and Mrs. Spaced Out Radio, it's a real dim orange-type light. It is very relaxing, and it actually cleanses the air and cleanses the energy in your room while you're sleeping. And I've actually found that since we've had that, I've had better night's sleep since putting that salt lamp in my room. And I'm sure there's other people out there who would agree with me, whether they're in the Spaced Out uh, radio uh, chat room or they're in Paranormal Into the Night or they're in... um, or they're in uh, paranormal forum. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's definitely something I would I would like to try. Yeah, I, I'll go to uh, you know any store over here. I guess would have it. I'll I'll take a look for it on the internet and see who has it on Staten Island and go take a look. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Dave. That's awesome. awesome. Not a problem. You got any questions you want answered, or are you just popping by for your quick uh, New York Mets bashing? Because me being a Yankee fan and it's spring <laughs> training, we're, you and I are about to get it on again this baseball season. Oh, yeah. We're getting it on this year, man. We're getting it on. Uh, but, uh, no, nah, I can't wait for you to move to Spreaker, man. That's going to be great. Um, I'm obviously following you over there, and obviously you got the support of my base. You know, and you got the support of me, you know, so uh, that's a big base behind you there. Hopefully we can get you up to 1,000 likes, and uh, that's my goal is to help you. And then, uh, you know, when I decide to make my mm-hmm. move, uh, I hope you would do the same. So, thank you. Well, you know what? It's something that we have to do. Our audience, the way I look at it is if one person cannot get the audio, and I know there's more than one person out there, uh, or they're losing audio audio during the show, they're not going to tune in. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's a problem. That's a, that's a problem for me. That's oh, a that's big, big problem. problem for me. And so... What I'm looking at here as I move forward and we move Spaced Out Radio forward, you know, we need to be able to capture every set of ears we can because people aren't going to be able to tune in every night. People aren't going to be able to tune in maybe once a week. We -hmm. understand that. But the main thing is if all they have on their mind is, yeah, that show sounds great when I can hear it, they start tuning out. And I'm not about... You know, and I am not about to lose um, audience members because of inferior technology and people who don't want to run a proper program. And I hate to say that, but, you know, that's really what it comes down to. And so it's very, very interesting indeed. Spreaker has a great program. I've learned a lot about it over the last weeks. The unfortunate part is I'm stuck right now mm-hmm. and I can't with this Skype thing because I can't move forward until that gets done, but we're working on it, and I can't wait to get there. Awesome, man, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm behind you. You know you know that. Thank you. You're my, you're my buddy. You know that, and uh, I'm, I'm behind you all the way. You know, since day one, I've been here, my friend. And, yeah, you uh, have. Happy, uh, happy to help you. So I appreciate uh, that. I can't wait for the round table, man, on the 26th. It's yes. going to be great. Yeah. Friday Friday night the 26th and just so you know we're going to be changing up the round table a little bit for our new listeners who tune in every the last Friday of every month I do what we call the SOR round table where I bring in hosts like Joey Kareen DeWinter Supernatural Radio has been in there numerous times and other hosts I bring them in and I ask a bunch of questions and it can go from paranormal to political to the wacky and absurd but we're changing it up now a little bit because 
I want to still do a little bit of the funnier topics just to relax, but I want to get more into the paranormal side and the supernatural side and what we, and we're going to have some good debate and some good con conferences on that. So it's going to be changed up for topics a little bit. We're going to stick more with the theme of what we are doing on a nightly basis with this show and the experiences people are having out there, but it's still going to be quite fun on the Space Out Radio SOR Roundtable, which is the final Friday of the month, which is this Friday, just three days from now. Joe, I got another couple callers, so I'm going to let you go here. Uh, All right, thank man. you so much for calling in. Appreciate it. Take care, man. Thank you. Uh, take care. All right. Do we go to break or we do, do we take a call? Let's take a call. Area code 519. You are on the air with myself, Dave Scott, on Space Out Radio. Who's this? Oh, this is your old friend, Terry. Oh, Terrence. Terrence, how are you? Terrence is a Go Toronto on, Maple Dave. Leafs fan. You know, uh, oh, not too sometimes. much. Well, you know sometimes. what? It's, I don't know what's worse right now, being a Canucks fan or a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. And in Paranormal Into the Night, I know Bill Cardwell is rolling his eyes right now. and He's probably saying, oh, geez, Dave, not again. Not another shot at my Maple Laughs. Oh, they're bad. Anyways, yeah. quick story for you before bed. Sure. Uh, la- last summer, I had a really weird, like, really weird week. Um, like, I commute to work. I live in Guelph. I commute to Cambridge, which is uh, about a 25-minute country drive, straight back roads. Um, So on the Sunday night, I was driving home from work, and I noticed this light in the sky. It was like, the only way I can describe it is I'm I'm pretty sure it was a UFO. That's that's what I saw, right? Like, there's no tower there. There's nothing there. It was the middle of the country. And it kind of followed me as I was driving, right? And I've seen these in the past. Like when I was a kid, I used to see stuff like that. Um, But it was the first time in a while. So it was like, okay, well, that's kind of weird. And it followed me like until I got to town and then kind of, I couldn't, I couldn't track it anymore. So the next night I was driving home and I turned, like there's a tight corner, there's a tight turn. And like I had my high beams on and I just happened to catch some eyes and like out of the bushes comes this massive wolf. But it was just one wolf by itself. And I was like, well, that's pretty messed up. And it looked at me and I looked at it and then it took off. And I was like, well, that's really messed up. So then I went home and I like started looking up like, oh, like, you know, the, the karma behind seeing a wolf on its own. And I guess it's extremely rare. So I was kind of already taken back. I'm like, one day, one night I see a UFO. The next night I see this lone wolf. I'm like, what the heck's going to happen next, right? So over the course of the next five days, I see the same light in the same spot again, doing the doing my night country dr- drive, and I see another wolf, different color, different size, like on the same road. And that all happened in one week. Wow. Now, let me ask you this. What makes you believe that you were seeing a UFO in the sky and maybe just not a star or a planet that just happened to be aligned at that spot? Um, well, I, the only way I can describe it is it was like a circular ball of fire from where I was sitting in my car. Right. And there, there's, I'm talking about like the literal middle of the country. There's no towers. There's no buildings. If it, if a plane flies overhead, you can clearly see it's a plane. I'm, I mean, we're about uh, 30 minutes from the Toronto airport there, uh, 20 minutes from the Waterloo airport. There's another one in Hamilton. You can clearly see a plane. Um, yeah, and it just it seemed to kind of track my car as I made the drive. And it, it happened twice in the same week. I had seen it a couple other times. Uh, actually driving with my girlfriend at the time. She was the one who pointed it out to me. Um, and it was always in the same spot. So, was, that, I mean, that was really strange, I thought. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to give you a name that I want you to look up at a website. If you've ever heard, um, you probably haven't, but there's a lady named Miriam Delicato. 
and she lives in northern British Columbia. And in 1988, she actually had something similar happen to her right outside of the town that I now live in, literally one mile outside the town. And basically what happened to her was she was followed by an orb. Her and her friends in the vehicle were followed by an orb that happened to be following them for literally two or three different towns in the area. And every time a car would come up or headlights would come up to pass them, this orb would disappear. The minute it got dark again, this orb was right behind the car until eventually they, whoever they are, pulled the car over and Miriam got out and they took Miriam. And she was gone for three plus hours. Now, I'm not saying that's happening to you, Terry. I'm not trying to freak you out. But if you go to her her website, uh, bluestarprophecy.com, that's bluestarprophecy.com, she will, uh, there's some really cool information that may resonate with you with what you're seeing. And a lot of people see animals when they are having experiences in regards to extraterrestrial sightings. Well, I mean, that's that's got to be like, what are the chances of seeing like a lone wolf on its own, right? Like, but but twice in one week, and it was it was definitely not the same wolf. Mm-hmm. So I I found that to be very strange. Hmm. Very interesting indeed, man. Very interesting. No. Keep your eyes on the skies. This is, it. yeah, man. I appreciate that, and that's something that we have to do. We got to keep our eyes on the skies because if we don't, we're not going to see these experiences happening. Too many people got their faces buried in their cell phones today, so you know, and they're worried about other things, you know, because uh, life is so busy in this twenty-four hour society that we're in. So I'm glad you were able to to tell me that because I think you probably saw a UFO as well. You know, that's, that's my opinion. I don't don't really have a doubt in my mind that I did. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, like the one night my girlfriend was in the car, like she pointed it out uh, previously um, because it did happen outside of that week. Um, Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that prompted us to take, she was, she was like excited about it. She started reading into stuff. Uh, She wanted to go for like, longer drives up north in the country just to check out the skies. So, I mean, it did actually lead to kind of fun little night road trips, you know? It's it's interesting just to check that stuff out. And, Terry, you know my wife, Mrs. Spaced Out Radio. You have met her before. Uh, yeah. That That's how her and I started. Almost identical is, you know, we were starting to see UFOs outside our house almost every night and every night didn't matter how cold it was. We were going outside because there was always something happening. So I want you to really check that out. Really, really study it, you know, and you don't have to read books. A lot of people will tell you, you have to read books or you have to watch these television shows or do your research online. That's what I did. And the only thing that I lost out of it all or got out of it all was a lack of sleep. Okay. So, you know what, it doesn't hurt, even though you're not a scientist or a researcher or a UFO expert, it doesn't hurt to just record your own sightings. See if you can find that pattern. See if you can find what is going on with you, okay? So, is the wolf always there when the UFO is there, okay? When you drive down that stretch of highway, is uh, are you seeing wolves all the time, you know? I know my area has a very high concentration of wolves. And, you know, I saw my first one up close and personal a couple of weeks ago, yeah. albeit no, I was in no, a vehicle. This is not, uh, this is not like, a, like a typical wolf environment. Like, I, I would say you would have to drive, like, it's fairly populated. Now, this was like in a rural, like, it's more of a farm area. But I would imagine you'd have to drive a good, hour and a half, two hours north into Ontario to actually be more in like a wolf kind of territory, right? So that that's why it like really struck me as odd seeing not one but two of these animals, right?
What is your gut feeling? Do you think the two are connected? Oh, they have to be. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I, when they looked at me, I, like I got an instant vibe, like because it, it looked like directly at me. Like it wasn't like it was blinded by the lights. Like it looked right at, like right in my face. So mm-hmm. I mean, it, like it definitely. Uh, like I, it, I felt something and sent me some sort of message. Right. Pat in the Space Out Radio chat room has a comment for you. She is saying, tell Terry that seeing wolves means that he is being given the message of seeking wisdom from the elders and listen to words of wisdom from others. And Pat is someone I really trust their op- her opinion when, when she talks about this because she is not only very connected, but she's of uh, First Nations descent as well. So take that for what it is. Wolves are usually a good sign. Like myself, I see cougars. I don't know yeah. why. I don't I don't see bears. Uh, you know, everybody has a spirit totem animal. Mine happens to be a cougar. And, you know, it's one of those things where, um, you know, if you're seeing wolves, that's probably, you know, do some research and, you know, all you have to do is Google spirit, uh, wolf spirit animal, and you'll be amazing at how synchronistic doing that one Google search will become to what you are experiencing and what you're feeling on your daily life. So it's uh, very, very cool on that end. Yeah. Well, I, I just figured I'd share that with Appreciate you here before that. bed. Keep, not a problem. Sorry, keep, me in, keep me in touch and don't worry. Uh, this is a private message for Terry listeners. We are working on doing something on our trade. I'm just haven't got to it yet. Terry and I are in a hockey no, league together. That's <laughs> online, so uh, that's we right. uh, been, we uh, compete pretty well. All right, buddy. Take care. I Thanks know. for calling. All right, one six zero seven two zero three five three four four. I think I'm about eight minutes late for a break, but that's okay. We're just going to run this through. We're going to run this through. We got another caller here from a seven four zero area code seven four zero. How are you tonight? Where are you calling from? Hi, um, this is Lori from Ohio. Hi, Lori from Ohio. Gee, another Ohioan. <laughs> I know. What Tell else? Me about it. What What else is new? That you know, I mean, this might as well become the Ohio show. <laughs> well, hey, you know, <laughs> what can I say? It's in the water. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm with. Yeah, exactly. How can I help you out tonight, Gloria? Do you have a, a question, or do you have a a uh, story to tell us. I have a story to tell you. Oh, I'm excited. Let me know. <laughs> I think you said you've been there, but I went to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I have never been there. Never been there. Okay. Uh, you need to go there. Um, the vibe is, wow, it just blows you away. But anyways, I went to a place called Devil's Den. And it's one of the sites that is, you know, there were battles there. And um, I was there with two other people, and we were taking pictures and everything and, and uh, kind of thinned out. There was only us, and there was one of the couple that was above us parked. And um, it was right around dusk, and we were talking, and all of a sudden you hear all this yelling and screaming and gunfire and, like, just mass confusion. And I, we all look at each other like, what is that noise? I thought, oh, they must be having a reenactment. How cool. So I run up the, the, the little uh, hill they had, and I'm looking around, and there's nobody there. There's a couple way, 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 way far off taking a picture of a memorial somewhere. So I'm looking around thinking, oh, well, they have those things where you can get like, a, like a, um, an audio and like explain things to you and stuff like that throughout the park. So I'm looking around to see if anybody has their car, and nobody has their car on. So we're all looking at each other like, what is going on? And, I mean, it is just, you can hear people yelling orders. You can people hear people screaming. You can hear people, you know, um, trying to to uh, reload their guns. It was just insane. And then it's, then it stopped. And I was like, wow, I got chills up and down my arms. Well, Later on, like about a week later, the person who was taking the pictures, um, and I don't have them, but um, taking pictures, and he developed them, and he was showing them to me, and I swear on all that is holy that um, the pictures showed um, 
the Union soldiers on um, the backs of horses and soldiers in the background, and it was just insane. It was nuts. And wow. I won't go. Yeah, it was crazy. Mm hmm. It, it was yeah. unbelievable. Now, when you were there, were you able to pick up anything with your open eyes, let alone your own gifts or other technology? Because I know a lot of people who have gone to Gettysburg mm-hmm. have had open sightings with their, within feet of them and with just, you know, their own vision. And that's the experience I love to have. That's the one that kind of uh, gets me all excited. Yeah, I've never had that. And and I would be afraid to have it. I think honestly, I think I block it because I don't want to see it. But um, I'm more clear audience than I am anything else. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, that was just. And we had a couple other pictures of. Um, we were going through the park and just taking pictures, and we had a picture of like a Union soldier walking through a field, and there were no reenactors of that field either because it was a closed off. In fact, it was a little round top is where it was at. And um, it is just the vibe there is just wow. It'll just wow. I mean, I just can't even explain it to you. It's um, the energy is so the the air is just filled with like oh, so much energy, and your body is just literally like, like it's almost like bouncing off your body. I don't know how else to explain it. I have never been in a place like that, but the place that you you will soon hear me talk a lot about as you continue to listen to this show, I talk about what we call the farm. The farm is okay. where I had the farm is where I had a lot of paranormal experience. The farm is where I had my Sasquatch experience, my UFO landing experience, my uh. extraterrestrial experience, and I I can tell you this, when you're on property that is haunted or spiritual activity all over the place or just supernatural activity in general, the buzz that you get off of that property, much like you are saying that you got from Gettysburg, is incredible because you always want to keep looking to see where you are you where you are what's going to happen how is it going to happen it's a lot of fun mhm yeah that, that, that i understand what you're saying because it's almost like a heightened sense of um mm, i don't know what the word is like i don't want to say exhilaration but like a heightened sense of uh i don't even know what the word is but your mm. your senses are very heightened they're very up they're very you know out there, For you sure. know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And the thing is, the one thing that I love about it, and I wish I could go back to the farm, but the farm has since been sold. Mm. And if I would have I would have had if I would have had the money, I would have bought that place in a heartbeat because, mm. you know, every night it was something different. And mm. and it was it was incredible and i think those places are spiritually very hard to find mm-hmm. you know yeah. i i don't feel it i've got bigger property now where i moved up north into british columbia i don't feel it here you know mm-hmm. i'm hoping that when i do get property that you know i don't know maybe i have to build a landing pad i don't know but i'm <laughs> hoping that that i have to uh uh um that i can get into it and have that feeling once again. I just haven't had the, uh, I just happen to have the feeling that, you know, it's out there. I just have to find it. So, you know what, keep that feeling. Are you, are you naturally intuitive? Yes. Okay. Yes. Very and, have you, and have you signed up for Spreaker yet to support us and give us a follow there? Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. So nice mm-hmm. to know you're going to be following us over. Yes, sir. I will. Awesome. Absolutely. 
Lori, I'm going to let you go because I want to get to another caller here who is patiently waiting for 26 minutes. So I would uh, just want to say thank you for calling in and sharing your story. I And I do plan on getting to Gettysburg one of these years. It is on my paranormal places to go, and I want to see what I get to see. It'll be a lot of fun. Thank you so cool. much for listening and for following us on Spreaker for when we make the move. Yes, sir. Thank you. Take care, Lori. Bye-bye. All right, we're, we are going to a Skype line now. I have no idea who this is because it comes up with weird digits here. Hi, who is this? Hi, Dave. How are you? Yeah. This is this is the late night president over at Spreaker dot com, the one and only Todd Morris. How are you? Oh, I have a feeling that I'm being trolled here. What's going on? What no, are you going to play? No, no, no. I'm not here to play anything. I am here to congratulate you. On on making such a fabulous decision to move over to Spreaker, it is about time. Dave Scott, I cannot tell you how excited and how proud I am to hear this wonderful news that you are going to be joining all of us over at Spreaker Late Night. I can't wait. Well, thank you. And are are you going to troll me? Like, Do I get anything like John Cena music or anything like that? John Cena music. Now, if I played any kind of wrestling music, it would have to be from my good friend, the one and only Nature Boy, Rick Blair. Nice, nice. Well, where is it, man? Where where is it? Come on. I'm waiting for it. I don't have the music, Dave. I was just saying, if I had you you, you know. you're, You're breaking my heart. You are breaking my heart. I'm not a troll, Dave. I swear, I'm telling you. i I. I'm really not a troll. Google me. Look me up on Spreaker.com. Why don't you, Dave? Look me up on Spreaker.com. President because, Don Morris. Because, President you Don ha- because you have a very deep American accent, and Spreaker is run out of Europe, and you don't have a European yes. accent. So explain no, that. There's no, there's no Europeans over at over at Spreaker.com. But if you check out the late night lineup over at Spreaker, you will find out that a lot of us uh, fellow blog talk radio late night hosts like yourself made the move over to Spreaker over three years ago. We left blog talk radio with their poor audio and their poor customer service, and we made the move over to Spreaker and iHeartRadio. And you know what? It's paid out big time for us over there. Big time. Good stuff. Good stuff. What show are you on? I am on Prankville, USA. Yes, you can catch me right there live on Spreaker.com. Just look me up, Dave, President Todd Morris, and I'm going to mention your wonderful show uh, live awesome. on my next podcast. And, uh, yes, I'm sure that we'll, we'll get you some listeners right away there, Dave. Right away. Hey, I appreciate it. appreciate it. Thank you so much for calling in, buddy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dave, for, for talking to me. And thank you very much, Blog Talk Radio. So long. Hurry up, Dave. Get over to Spreaker. Quick. Oh, all right. War. Take care. And Nazis. <laughs> we got a lot of Nazis. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I was waiting for the troll part to come in. I, you, you, you almost made it. You almost made it. That's nice. Got to love the trolls when they hit up. It's always good. One six zero seven two zero three five three four four is the call in number. Imagine that he waited thirty minutes for that. Thirty minutes, seriously. Thirty minutes he waited for that. Well, what do you do? What do you do? Some people just have to do it. It's in their blood. It's in their how would you do it? How could you say it? It's just in their blood. I'm not even mad about that. Normally I get pissed off with the trolls. You know, and that's why I don't do a lot of open lines. You know, because I kind of get pissed off with them. You know, that's why, you know what, I, I'm going to be honest with this guy here. I was a little disappointed because the last couple of trolls that that came in to make phone calls, 
you know, at least I got some John Cena music playing and it was kind of entertaining. But, you know, this guy here, you know what, whatever. Let's just not get into it. That's just the way it is. So we got 10 minutes left. What do you want to talk about? There was a question from Paranormal Into the Night. I believe it was from Claudia. If I have ever seen a or held a crystal skull. I've never seen one. Uh, I know someone who has one. I cannot give out their name because they're very rare. Now, we're talking the original crystal skulls. I can say they're around the Mount Shasta area of California. And the energy that comes off of those is just incredible. Just absolutely incredible in regards to what is going on. And the energy that it has, I would love to get the opportunity to absolutely hold one. I wonder if you walk into a room where one of these crystal skulls is. I wonder if you can feel it. I know this person keeps it very locked up tight in a very safe, secure place because they are very worried about it either getting stolen or broken. I'd be more worried about broken, but it is in a very secure place because it was given to her. But it's something that I would love to see. It's something that I would love to be able to um, do my best to have an experience with that. Yeah, I'm kind of PO'd about. I haven't had a UFO experience in a long time. When's the last time you had a, a UFO experience? I haven't seen a UFO in months. Maybe it's because it's so damn cold up here that I haven't been spending much time outside and minus 20 degrees will Celsius, not Fahrenheit, will do that. I would like to see a UFO again. I'd like to have a nice experience again. Why? Because when you have one that lands 150 yards away from you, you want to see them more. You want to see them happen. You want to see them manifest themselves wherever they are. I mean, it's great to see something up in the sky, whether it's flashing lights that don't match an airplane, whether it's a black triangle that people are seeing, whether it's rods flying through the sky. But when you can get up close and personal with it, would you go? Think about that for a second. We all talk bravely here. Would you go? I would. I would totally go. The first time it freaked me out. I didn't know what to do. The second time, I would totally go. And I'm looking forward to it if I'm allowed that opportunity again, because somehow I don't think we have much control over it. It'd be kind of interesting to see what is truly out there. I'd like to see extraterrestrials again. Gloria in Paranormal Into the Night says, you mean like an onboard experience? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. An onboard experience. I'd get on. But from what I have heard, you have to be careful with that because these UFOs apparently give off a lot of radiation that our bodies cannot handle. So I think it's very, very interesting where you have to be careful with that. But if I have another landing in front of me, like I experienced in April of 2014, I'm going. If I have another face-to-face -face encounter with an extraterrestrial where I have time to warm up to it, like I did the first one that I saw in April of 2014, five days after the landing, I will walk up to it. I think I'm ready 
for that. Thank you, Amelia, in the Space Out Radio chat room. She says, close encounters of the Dave kind. Yes. Yes, they were. But I can tell you this. My own curiosity would probably get the better of me in regards to what is truly out there. My own curiosity makes me want to go out over there next time and make sure that I am seeing what I am truly seeing. Make sure that I am truly having the experience that I know I'm having and that I know is going to be a rush. We'll see where it happens. I don't know if it's going to happen. Maybe it was a one and done. Claudia is asking in the paranormal end of the night if aliens visit me in my dreams. No. No, they do not. Mrs. Space Out Radio, though, at least once every couple weeks will wake up at about 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the morning, sometimes earlier, sometimes later. She will open their eyes and they will be standing in our room. I miss all the fun stuff. I think she gets taken a hell of a lot more than I do. And quickly, Pat Penn in the Space Out Radio chat room is saying, just make sure to bring they bring you back to the same time, not 50 years ahead or something. I would actually like to go 50 years ahead. I'd like to see where this show is 50 years from now. Who's hosting it? Because 50 years from now, I have a pretty good feeling I'm not going to be here. That would put me at the ripe age of 92, where I'll be talking like this. Hey, remember when we had that experience? Remember when that UFO landed? Hold on, my teeth fell out. I think that would be funny, doing this show at 92. We'll see where it goes. (laughs) Sometimes, you know, I hate to laugh at my own jokes because I'm really Ray Romano type not funny. But that was kind of entertaining for me. Man, it's amazing. This show's done. It's almost over. In like 20 seconds, I have to play the closing audio. It's going to be really cool. So I want to thank all of you for tuning in tonight. Kim Babcock, our guest, her website, kimbabcock.net. If you want to check out her website, she was our first hour guest. Thank you to all the callers, including our resident troll, for calling in on Space Out Radio tonight. Do you have a topic or guest you'd like to hear on Space Out Radio? Email us, dave at spaceoutradio.com. Send us a quick message on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio or a message on our Facebook page, Spaced Out Radio. Once again, here's Dave Scott. And once again, I want to thank Kim Babcock for joining us in our number one of Spaced Out Radio tonight. It's an absolute pleasure to have her on the air with us, KimBabcock.net. Tomorrow night on the show, we're going back into the crypto world, the crypto guru. Ron Murphy will join us. We're going to talk about writing crypto books. We're going to talk about cryptid creatures from fairies to trolls to goblins, Bigfoot, Dogman. We're going to get into it tomorrow night. If you've never heard Ron Murphy, he's a lot of fun, and he's so passionate about it. That's why we have him on once a month on this show. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. You can also ask to join our Spaced Out Radio group and our other group, Podcast Central. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott, S-O-R, and, of course, our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show. Sign up for it. Subscribe. And don't forget, follow us on Spreaker. That's where we're going next. Would love it if you gave us a follow. We're trying to get to 1,000. Hey, thank you so much for joining us tonight. All the callers, indeed, you were fantastic. And we really appreciate the love and support that we are getting out of the Space Out Radio chat room, Paranormal Forum, and Paranormal Into the Night. And if you're in our Space Out Radio chat room and you haven't signed up for Paranormal Into the Night yet, just go on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, type in Paranormal Into the Night, 
and ask to join the group. It's a great group of people. You want to go there. Hey, I'll be back in exactly 22 hours. I hope you are too. We'll see you next time tomorrow night in the hot seat here at Spaced Out Radio.